Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello, see everyone. Thank you. Um, if everyone's ready, what I'd like to do is just read out a few things, and um, and then I'll just open the floor up to questions, if that's okay. Everyone's cool with that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, as of midnight tonight, I will become the 19th Commissioner of the Queensland Police Service, uh, only the 19th in 148 years. Um, I'm very, very proud to have been chosen to take that role on. I understand the accountability and the transparency that will come with that role. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with the community, but more, most importantly, with all of the members of the Queensland Police Service to provide excellent policing to this state. In doing that, I'm going to provide three directions to my staff. I'm going to challenge them to stop crime, to make the community safer, and to build relationships across the community and within the Queensland Police Service. In doing so, I'm going to ask all of our police and our members to strive to be courageous, to be fair, and to be proud. Uh, these are important characteristics that I expect my staff will embody and provide to the community every day. Uh, my support for my staff has been questioned in recent times. Every day I attend public meetings, I attend meetings of our staff uh, at functions all over this state. And on every occasion, I thank our staff for the work that they do in what is a very, very complex environment. I hope that all members of our organisation will look to my record uh, all of my record in the way that I look to them to provide that service excellence on a daily basis. And I do that by providing them with the appropriate training, the appropriate equipment and the appropriate uh, support that they need to do that. What is a very, very complex job. Um, I'm happy to take questions from, uh, from any of you. Hurricane. Yeah, it's a great, um, it's a great new nickname, and, and I actually like it. And I'm very grateful to Ian Levers for it. Um, probably Cyclone would have been better, but um, uh, I'll go with Hurricane at the moment. Um, look, we've got some rocky days ahead. There's no doubt about it. Um, Ian's a great friend of mine. Uh, I've known him for a long time, and I've had a very productive and professional working relationship with him, um, as I as I have with uh, all the unions. And tomorrow morning, I intend to ring Ian. I intend to ring. John Poyning, who is the President of the Commissioned Officers Union, and I intend to talk to Alex Scott of the Together Union to start that dialogue uh, for me in my new role, uh, to talk to them, consult with them on issues which I think are important for our organisation into the future. Was he wrong to accuse you of the things that he did? Um, he made a, a range of statements uh, that came from comments that I've made over the last couple of weeks in, in, in uh, media conferences just like this. And one of the issues with media conferences is that I have no control over what you print or what you report on, even though they may go for some time. Uh, you choose uh, the issues that you want to get out there. And I'm fine with that. That's the role of media. But I hope that uh, particularly my staff, my members of, uh, of the Queensland Police Service, will use their uh, common sense in judging me, uh, judging what I stand for and judging the way that I, I represent a whole range of issues that I want to take forward during the next few years as the Commissioner of this uh, great organisation. Do you think it was wrong that he circled that internal email? Um, look, I think that the union has a very, very vital role to play in representing the issues that are important, that they think are important to the membership. But again, I would just say that I hope that people will um, uh, use their common sense uh, to make their judgments themselves on how uh, I have behaved and how I have acted over a long period of time. Um, I think I've, I've demonstrated that um, I'm a decisive person. Um, I have very, very strong standards. Um, and, and this is not about um, uh, people who uh, perhaps uh, make mistakes, um, who uh, errors uh, that are minor in nature. Um, I actually believe that most discipline issues in this organisation could be handled by local bosses uh, right on the spot uh, with the appropriate recording. Uh, and that's going to be a very important f factor for the future in trying to allow people just to um, perhaps get some counselling or if they're not right for it, if they haven't committed it, uh, uh, the, the breach or the error of the complaint, um, then uh, there are processes that we can go through 
uh, to show that uh, they should be exonerated uh, from uh, any complaint that's made in that regard. So there are always two sides to this story. But if there has been a mistake and it's an honest mistake, let's, let's get the counselling, let's get the guidance, or let's get on with our job. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, though, we do have those who, who don't meet the standards, I believe, are necessary to, to remain in this organisation. And I will be talking to the government about my ability uh, through a commissioner's confidence to actually be able to um, quickly and decisively uh, ask people to show cause why they remain. Now, there are checks and balances in, in all of that. Um, there is administrative law, there are appeal processes, and I have no problem with that at all. Um, because I think that they're the rights when people are talking about their employment. But there are definite standards that, that um, I have and I think the community expect of us uh, that people will have to meet every day. Did you expect this kind of reception from the union? Was it, or was it a surprise? Um, look, the, we're heading into an EB arrangement. Um, I think uh, I'm the new boy on the block um, and I think that uh, uh, there's a bit more of this to come yet. Um, it's that settling in period. And I understand that. I accept it. Uh, I've been in this organisation a long time and I've changed jobs numerous times in the organisation. As you move into a new role, you've got to prove yourself and uh, I hope to do that. How comfortable are you with the politics of the role though, already having to deal with the union? The police <coughs> minister came out today and danced around the subject and said, oh, well, they're entitled to their... I mean, you're a, you're a policeman, you're a leader, you hold standards, mm. but there's politics involved too, isn't there? Uh, the, there's always politics, and the police commissioner's role uh, fundamentally is about keeping politics away from the operational day-to-day -day work of our organisation, and uh, uh, I expect that I'll have many of these types of challenges into the future. And as I said, we're coming up to an EB um, uh, negotiation for the organisation, so I, I suspect there'll be a lot of posturing going on, and, uh, and I understand that. I have no problem with it. You just said that there's rocky days ahead. Can you elaborate on what you mean by that? I'm sorry, could you say that? Uh, you're expecting there'll be rocky days ahead. Can you elaborate uh, on that? Absolutely. Um, the government have flagged, as they have flagged to every public sector organisation, that they want to see greater performance, greater efficiencies, more innovation. Um, I think we're up for that as an organisation. I really do. I get a sense that the organisation's ready for change. Uh, we are already doing work on looking at um, structural reform. We've had the same framework and structure for the last almost 25 years. Uh, ever since Fitzgerald, uh, there, were, there were issues then that um, drove the plans and the framework and the structure which no longer exist. And I, what I want to be able to uh, go to government with is a very consolidated plan with, I hope, the union's uh, support for it uh, to look at ways that we can do things better, uh, that we can actually get the front line uh, uh, a greater number of police back on that front line to do, th to do the job that the public expect us to do. I think one of the greatest things and probably one of the most underestimated uh, uh, roles that we play is simply being visible out there every day so that um, the criminals know that we're there and that um, certainly they don't chance their arm. They don't commit the offences simply because the police are out on the, on the job. And of course we use intelligence based uh, policing to achieve that. That's my goal, to get more police out onto that front line uh, in a way that the government, uh, I think, has an expectation on behalf of the community. Can you elaborate on what you mean by wanting to have the ability to ask particular officers to show cause for their reason of staying in the force? At the moment, um, about the only way that a person uh, can leave this organisation is either by resigning or through a often very, very protracted discipline process. I think there are circumstances where uh, the evidence is so clear that I think that the, uh, the Commissioner should have the right to simply call on that person to show cause why they should remain. In other words, they have to argue their case about what occurred. Now, please, this is not, again, this is not one-sided. I, I suspect that um, any, uh, any power like that would come with an appeal process of checks and balances. And I'm more than comfortable uh, in, in talking to the government about that and how that would operate. But I, I do believe that we waste so much time as an organisation um, putting together um, briefs of evidence which would boggle, boggle most people's minds uh, just to simply say to someone, you haven't met our standards. And I'm, talking, I'm not talking about officers who uh, turn up late or not wearing a uniform or who, uh, who may be accused of being rude to the public. I'm not talking about that at all. 
99% of our people go to work every day just to do the best job that they possibly can. But, like everyone, they're human beings. They make mistakes sometimes. At the, and those mistakes, if they're little mistakes, they're easily dealt with, in my opinion. But the high-end stuff, the stuff that's quasi-criminal, or actually criminal, I think that there, there comes a time where an organisation should be able to say, you don't meet our standards, um, see you later. Uh, look, there are many examples of this around the country. Um, Western Australia and New South Wales um, have a commissioner's confidence. Um, some, uh, I think the legislation needs to be quite strong legislation because it's more an administrative law. It's not actually in the criminal law that this occurs. Um, and it would simply be the power to show cause a person. In other words, ask them to, to explain why they should stay in the organisation when there is evidence of, of serious misconduct. Have you got those people now? people in mind? Um, look, over time uh, I have uh, actually sacked a range of people in this organisation um, through a discipline, through the discipline process um, uh, and that is true of uh, my brother and sister deputies before me. Um, I would rather where the case is very clear uh, instead of waste, wasting often months of, of effort and time to be able to do this very very quickly um, and uh, you know with some with a level of respect for the organisation, but also for the individuals involved. There's always victims in these, uh, in these matters. Um, taking a person's employment away is a very serious thing, and I understand that. But I think there comes a time, and all of you would have experienced this in your organisations, where people cross the line and they don't deserve to be part of the organisation because they won't meet the standards. When will you ask the Newman government for a commissioner's conference? <laughs> I think that's sort of already ha happened, hasn't it? <laughs> what about Ian Leaves' comments about retribution? He repeated that several times. Concerns about retribution of this and the line in um, I was very interested in that. Um, I think what Ian was talking about um, was the pre Fitzgerald type times where there was a suggestion that senior officers would, uh, corrupt senior officers, would silence uh, junior officers by simply um, sending them off to the out to the woods, so to speak. In other words, transferring people to uh, places that weren't um, as nice as the Gold Coast or, or the Sunshine Coast. I think that's what he's actually talking about. But again, I think the environment has shifted so far and the uh, accountability and the transparency of our organisation has shifted so far since those days. Um, I, um, I, I perhaps uh, don't consider there is a risk of that occurring. Um, certainly, certainly, I would be suggesting if there was a, uh, an issue of, um, commi of commissioner's confidence that there would be checks and balances. And it may, be as, it may actually be that I don't make the decision, I simply ask a tribunal uh, to enact that confidence or, or enact uh, my request for the show cause. That's just possible too. Just to clarify, but as far as retribution from you for not you know, towing your line, it seems to be what... No, um, well, yeah, I mean, I didn't understand and I haven't spoken to Ian. He hasn't explained to me exactly what he was talking about, so I can't overly comment on that. But I think he was talking about those corrupt times where uh, officers would be punished uh, for doing virtually nothing wrong, uh, for perhaps being even um, morally correct and, uh, and quite ethical. Um, and on the EB issue, so come back to it, um, you think these comments, um, quite public comments in the email, might, uh, can be linked to the upcoming EV? Oh, look, I think, um, as I said, I think I'm the new boy on the block and this is a testing time. Um, I think the union are probably um, seeing where, how far they can go with me uh, in terms of um, uh, talking to their members, and that's what they did yesterday, but of course um, uh, it, it also got into the papers. Um, I actually think that the best way forward is in a partnership. I think the union have a lot to offer in working with me as the commissioner to, uh, to enhance the, uh, the workplace for our people. Um, I've talked about a, healthy, a more healthy police service um, and I said right from day one that if you do that, it would be a longer term process where you would consult with all the unions and you'd get the backing of scientific evidence. That was my claim right from day one. Unfortunately, that, that information probably wasn't um, accurately depicted um, to Ian and he made the claims he did. Um, uh, I think he calls it thought bubble uh, policing. But if I, as the Commissioner, and 
can't float these types of ideas to the community as well as to my people, um, then uh, I, I think it'll be a very sorry place. I mean, part of this is testing the waters uh, across, from my perspective as well, to see which issues uh, will, will gain traction and acceptance. Uh, and like the rest of the community, I think we're all much more um, focused on our, on our health and wellbeing. Um, and I would hope that over time that I can put in place programs and structures to assist our police, to motivate our police and all members of the organisation to be fitter and healthier. I think there are huge benefits for the community uh, if I do that. You take over at midnight on Halloween <laughs> and your predecessor left in the middle of a stall under driving rain. Do you believe in omens? Uh, no, not at all. Um, uh, that was, uh, these things happen. Um, I've um, been in many storms throughout my career um, and I am really looking forward to uh, the next period. Um, it, but I said earlier, there are going to be changes and they're not going to be easy. Um, there will always be those who, um, who would prefer it to be the way it's always been. Um, but society and the environment in which we work is moving so rapidly now that um, we actually have to paddle very, very hard to keep up and, and to get ahead of that. And that's where I want to take the organisation. You said that you wanted members to look to your record as an example. Is it a case of do as I do and do as I say? Absolutely. I, I think a leader who's, um, who is a uh, do as I say but not as I do is, a, is an abject failure. And um, I try every day. Uh, I work very, very hard to maintain the standards I talk about. Um, and certainly those um, uh, characteristics that I talk about um, in terms of courage and fairness and pride, um, I'm going to need them more than ever uh, in this new role. Did, the, did Bob give you any parting words to Bob? Um, he said enjoy the ride. Absolutely. And uh, uh, great advice, uh, amongst other things, but that's probably the most important. Thanks, everyone. You just want some